From Anshe Sfar, Bethel Emeth Congregation, it's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Simchat Torah, the ultimate joy. If we ask ourselves a question, what's so special about Simchat Torah? Why should that be the greatest joy? I mean, there's no lulav, there's no sukkah. How can you have joy without all these mitzvot? And yet, the Gemara says, Torah says you should be particularly happy. That includes the last day. That, the, the la- or, looking at it another way, the last day, you should be particularly happy. You should be even happy even on the last day. But why? What is it about the last day? So there's a beautiful thought they say in the name of Rabbi Salvechik, and we'll add a little bit to it. Salvechik said that during the Sukkot, we march around the Bima, Shulchan, and what's on the Shulchan? The Torah. If someone holds the Torah and we go around with the Lulav once a day, Hoshana Rabbah, seven times around on the seventh day. However, on Simchat Torah, we go around in a circle with the Torah. We're holding the Torah. And what's in the middle? Nothing. There's nothing. What does that mean? It's not nothing. It's like the Gemara says that. One day God will make a circle for the Tzadikim, for the righteous. And they'll go around and they'll point in the middle and say, This this is our God. And we say that verse on Simchas Torah. So it's interesting, interesting parallel. On Pesach, we have all these mitzvot, the matzos. On the seventh day, we say, We reached the point where we reached the splitting of the sea where people pointed to God and said, We can palpably see God. Similarly, on Sukkot, we have seven days of mitzvot. And then... On the last day of the eighth day, we, we can turn to God more palpably and say, This is our God. Similar between the two holidays. Also, if this is indeed true, that on Simchat Torah we can, we can sort of point to God more directly, then, then we're closer with God. Rabbi Salvaji explained elsewhere that when you're close with God, that's the ultimate Simcha. The Simcha which began on, on, on Yom Kippur. When you we were lefnei Hashem, we stood before God, which continued usmachtem lefnei Hashem okechem shivas yomim. Continued on Sukkot, where you rejoice before God seven days in the, in the temple, and now we, we try to do it the best we can. And then in Simchat Torah, if indeed we can feel God more palpably, God, God is right at the center of our dancing. Then surely the presence of God that brings the ultimate simcha. And Nite Gavriel, Rabbi Sinner. Contemporary, he explains that, well, you know why Simchas Torah is such a great joy? It's a great joy because you have to understand what is sukkos. What is a sukkah? So here uh, I'll point to the, the, the Pazuk in Yeshaya, the end of chapter 4 in Isaiah. He says, in the end of days, on Mount Zion, there'll be al kol kavod chupa. There'll be a chupa. There, there'll, be, there'll be a, 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 over, a cover for the Jewish people a cover of great honor. He mentions chupa and he mentions sukkah. There'll be a sukkah from all, to protect us from all the elements. It's sort of like the, the idea in the desert we were protected by the Ananea Kavod, by the clouds of glory. In the end of days, we'll be protected by a sukkah, a, a supernal sukkah by God, a chupa. But we see that there's a connection between chupa and sukkah. A chupa and a sukkah. And if Sukkos is the chuppah of God and the Jewish people, if on Sukkos we sort of marry to God through this chuppah, then what happens right after the wedding? You have the chuppah, then where do you go? The bride and groom go off to Yichud. They go to be by themselves. That's Shemini Yatzeres. Shemini Yatzeres, which is Simchas Torah, is all about what? That stay for one more day. You know, the, 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 the Rashi gives the mushal, the parable, to a man had a banquet for a lot of people, but then he said, I want you... My son, you stay extra. You're my one son. I want you to stay extra. So when we have Yichud with God, we're not with the 70 nations. We're not worrying about the 70 nations, the, the whole world on, on, on Shemini Yatzeres. Sukkos, we bring 70 cows for the 70 nations. But on Shemini Yatzeres, we have one cow. Just worrying about ourselves. We're just alone with God. Alone with God. That's Yichud. That's the room you go into after the chuppah. You go into a private room with a husband and wife. That's, that's what Simchas Torah is. It's the Yichud. It's to be alone with God. Uh, we hug the Torah. We kiss the Torah on Simchas Torah. 
or alone with God, it's the yichud. And then, what else do you do as soon as you get married? As soon as you get married, you say, okay, Mikudeshes, you're betrothed to this woman, you gave her the ring, let's read the ksuba. Let's find out about what are the details of this marriage. Let's get a little more deeply into it. What, what does this mean? That he's going to honor and cherish, and he's going to provide and sustain her. Okay, so we're going to find out about how this marriage works, what the details are. Similarly, as soon as we have our chuppah, as soon as we get married to God and Simchas Torah, we say, okay, let's read the ksuba. What's the ksuba of God and the Jewish people? It's the Torah. Let's read that Torah. Let's read the end. Let's start again. Let's read from the beginning, from beginning to end, so to speak, from end to beginning. Let's read uh, the whole thing. Let's read that ketuba because it's a wedding. And that why is there so much joy? Says Nidhi Gabriel, because it's a chupa, because Sukkos, and even more so Simchas Torah, it's the culmination, it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the climax of this entire wedding process. So on this Vazemes, he said a similar thought. He said that, it says that when it comes to Sukkos, it should be a matter of knowledge. We should come to learning and knowledge. What does that mean? He said, well, how did the Jews come to eventually get the Torah at Mount Sinai? What did they do to deserve a Torah at Mount Sinai? Well, before Sinai, they walked with God in the desert. Oh, they walked with God in the desert, and they had the clouds of glory over them. Oh, so by walking with God under His glory and His protection, then you merit to get the Torah. So what have we done for the last seven days? We, we walked with God in the desert. Lech teich As the Sfasema says elsewhere, the point of the sukkah is to show that we're walking with God. In the desert, we were willing to march into God's desert, and He'll take care of us. So after we've walked with God, we merited to get the Torah at Sinai. After we've walked with God on the days of Sukkot, we merit, hopefully, to receive the Torah once again. And uh, the, this, this, that explains why Sukkot is so happy and why Simcha's Torah is so happy. Because it's the day when you finally merit to get the Torah. Uh, to, you're worthy of getting the Torah because you've walked with God. Why is Simcha's Torah so happy? Simcha's Torah is happy because it's a chuppah, it's a marriage. Simcha's Torah is happy because you lift Hashem, you're in front of God. Simcha's Torah is happy because you finally merit to actually receive the Torah like on Shavuos to get the Torah all over again. And what do we do when we're happy, when we're married, and you, you, the relationship begins? We want to know the details. That's the Torah. <clears throat> it's all about our ksuba. It's, it's, our, it's our contract for life to find out what we need to do to make this relationship work. Thank you for joining us here at the Anshay Sfar Beth Elmeth Congregation here for our discussion of Simchat Torah. Join us each week for a discussion of the holidays, the parsha. And it's good, it's good to have you join us. Thank you, Jason Lefkowitz, our, our producer. And uh, check out our other videos as well. Thanks. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asby.org.